Today we're going to talk about painting. When you're painting today, you're trying to show me how many color wheel colors you can make using only the three primary colors. You definitely should be able to make the secondary colors, orange, green, and purple. You're probably going to be able to show me some of the intermediate colors as well. Maybe even some tints and shades that you figured out how to make using black and white. So we're going to take our sketch that we made last time. And today we're only going to be painting the background. So that means we're not going to be focusing on this bridge, but we're going to work on the sky, the mountains, and some of you might even have time to do the water and the ground down here. Uh, keep in mind, if you're doing the water and the ground, you also need to do the areas that you can see through the bridge railing. So don't forget about those spots. We're going to have our professional brushes. These have all different sizes and shapes, so you need to choose the brush that's right for the area that you're painting. We're also going to have our uh, regular temper paint colors that you can use to mix whatever you need. Now there's lots of different ways uh, artists like to mix colors. Sometimes they mix the colors directly on their painting. Other times they're going to mix them directly on a paint palette so they can kind of experiment with the color that they want before they go and start mixing. So I'm going to start with the sky and I'm actually going to start with this paint just directly on the paper. So I'm just going to dip my brush and I'm going to start filling in that sky area. I've chosen a brush that's a little bit bigger so that I can cover up this area more quickly. And if you get a little paint on your messy mat underneath, don't worry about that. So I'm just filling this area up. I'm kind of planning to do a sunset type of sky. You don't have to do a sunset sky. You could do it a different color if you would like. I was just planning on using the sky to show how I can make orange, since that's one of the colors that I'm going to need. Okay, so I've got that all filled in, but as of right now, I haven't actually mixed anything yet. I haven't shown off any color mixing skills at all. So I'm going to need to clean my brush, and I'm going to start adding a little bit of red into this to create some of my sunset color. So you have to dry the brush off so that there's no water mixed in. Red is a really dark color, so you really don't need a lot of it. I got just a tiny little bit, and I'm going to use that to start blending into my sky. Now, the thing about temper paint is it dries really fast, actually. So as you're painting, if your first color, the yellow, has already dried, you might use just a little bit of water to add a little moisture back to those colors so that they blend a little bit nicer for you. I do that all the time because I want this orange to be really kind of blended into the sky. I actually think I'm going to have this bottom part here be the darkest area. And then we can kind of blend that out. It doesn't have to be perfectly blended. I sometimes like it when my brush marks show a little bit. It just depends on your style of painting. Okay, now another little thing I'm going to do to kind of show off even more colors is I'm going to add a little bit of clouds to the sky, and I'm going to do that by adding in just a little bit of white. So I'm just going to tap those fluffy clouds in. Wipe off my brush so I don't get the white dirty as I get more. Okay, so, so far I have done all of this mixing without using my paint palette at all. Now when I do the mountains, I'm going to show you a different technique of mixing the color ahead of time before you actually put it on your painting. My mountains I'm planning on creating kind of a purple color for because I know that violet is another one of the colors that I'm going to have to make. So I'm going to scoop a large puddle of red because those mountains are pretty big. And then I'm going to scoop, I'm actually going to use this lighter blue. 
Both types of blues will work, but I find that this color makes kind of an interesting violet, I think. Okay. So now that I have these colors on my paint palette, I don't need to clean my brush. I can be as messy as I want on here because it's just me using it. And I'm gonna mix that red and blue together until I get the purple that I like. Going for just kind of a medium purple right now. There we go. Just filling that all in. Now, right now, my mountains are a little boring because they just have that one color. They don't have any texture on them whatsoever, so they don't look super realistic. So I'm definitely going to add a little bit more detail to these. I'm going to use a little bit extra blue to kind of add a little bit of shadow to the left side of these mountains. a little more. I love working on a paint palette because you don't have to clean your brush hardly at all if you don't want to. Kind of makes for some interesting colors. Okay, might even kind of tap it to give it kind of a textured look like maybe it's rough and not a smooth mountain. Okay, now I am going to clean my brush because on the other side of the mountain I want to add a little bit of white as kind of a highlight. So if one side's in shadow, that probably means that there's a little bit of light on the opposite side. So that was kind of a lot. Let's get the extra off and then blend it. There, that makes it look a little more realistic. Okay, so I've got two secondary colors done. I still have a third one that I need to make. I know this green needs to get somewhere on my paper. So my plan to include green was to make this little area right here some grass, okay? So that's a good way to do green. I'm gonna mix on my paint palette again, add in my yellow, and I still had a little bit of blue left over, so I think I'm gonna just use that same blue that I already have. Okay, yellow's pretty light, so I know I'm not gonna need a lot of blue to change it. That's why I got an extra big scoop of yellow. Okay, I think I've kind of got a yellow green going on right here and I'm gonna start with that. And kind of a funny little trick, I'm gonna paint right over the railing as I fill in these in-between spots. I can actually still see the pencil line from the railing. So later on, after the green paint has dried, I can go in and just paint that railing right on top of the green. Otherwise, I'd have to be taking my time to paint inside the lines, and sometimes I don't think that's worth the time. Just paint right over it. Now what I can do is I can take a little bit more of the blue, change that color of the green, and add a little bit of texture to this area. I'm just doing some upward brush strokes so that it looks a little bit like grass. In some spots. Okay. Maybe it gets a little darker down here because all grass isn't the same color, so I definitely don't need to worry about making that the same. And the last thing that you might think about doing today is the water. So for the water, I'm probably gonna choose a blue color. I might have a little bit of the sun colors reflected in the water, but I'm just gonna start with that blue. So I actually think I'm gonna go for the dark blue for this color. And I'm just gonna dip my brush, start filling it in. Once again, just painting right over the railing. Since I'm not mixing any colors, I don't need to clean my brush right now very much. Okay. 
And then to give this water a little bit more of a watery look, I'm going to add some wavy lines to it. So I'm just going to take a nice scoop of white and start using my brush to mix that into the blue. And I usually just do a lot of overlapping waves. I kind of make them bigger in the foreground and smaller in the background. That's going to give your painting an illusion of space if they're bigger up here. And then maybe I can add a little bit of those sky colors kind of blended in as well. So it looks a little, little bit of a reflection. Maybe a little more white. Really get some sparkle on that water from the light. Just like that. You are free to add more details to your background because of course yours isn't going to look just like mine. And those details are going to be up to you. Details are a great chance for you to show me those extra colors that you know how to create as well. 